head on Q2, a grizzly gone wild. It's kind of surreal. Um, you know, one of the times that he came by was just minutes after I had left. A bear and gardener is euthanized after breaking into multiple homes, plus renovating history. We've hosted um, dignitaries, celebrities, Hollywood figures. Um, Teddy Roosevelt has done um, numerous presentations here at the depot. A well-known billing staple is receiving a much needed facelift and campaign chaos. President Biden chooses to end his re-election campaign, but what's that mean for the Democratic Party? The 4.30 News on Q2 starts right now. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Monday. I'm Charlie Kleps. A grizzly bear was euthanized near Gardner last week after breaking into people's homes in search of food. Fish, Wildlife and Parks say the bear has been around for years and had become too comfortable with humans. Our Alina Howder takes us to Gardner, a place all too used to having run-ins with bears. A nearly 600 pound grizzly bear was euthanized last Thursday after it spent over a month breaking into gardener homes and businesses in search of food. One woman's encounter has her feeling safer rather than sorry. It's a scene most gardener residents are used to. He continued to get into garbage every single night, it seemed like. But this particular grizzly gave gardener residents like Debbie Dixon quite the experience after someone left a bag of garbage next to her locked can. I heard some crashing and banging, and he was just on the other side of the fence getting into a bag of garbage. Before it was killed by FWP last week, this bear was notorious. This is actually a picture of the bear. This is him right here. That's a photo I took years ago, actually out in the National Park in Yellowstone before he had a lot of the bad habits he developed more recently. Evan Stout with nonprofit Bear Awareness Gardener said the bear was most likely lured to town years ago by its apple trees. I always call him the gateway drug to conflict. Mm -hmm. And just kept coming back, gracing Gardner with its presence earlier this June. This year in particular, his behavior escalated to trying to break into buildings. He was able to enter a couple buildings, which is really, really scary. He broke out some windows. He attempted to enter a few others and was stopped. It's why Bear Awareness Gardner uses preventative measures like picking up apples during the season to prevent conflicts like this from happening. Part of our program, you know, getting those cans out for free or at a discounted price for businesses is what we're really, really working on right now. Giving the town of Gardner a bear-sized buzz as it paraded through town. If a bear finds some pizza crust and half of a hamburger and some old french fries or something, Collectively, that's more calories than he would find in weeks up in the natural landscape. To know that they're coming right by your house and to know that really with a grizzly bear that large, everything is vulnerable. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. And that bear carcass was spotted a mile or two up a stream from Yankee Jim Canyon floating in the water. Fish, wildlife and parks say they killed the bear in the river after it was seen crossing the highway. After that, it became a recovery effort of the body and was in a difficult spot to access with steep banks. The bear was missing its head and paws, shocking a woman near the banks, but FWP says that it is standard practice to remove any part of the carcass with monetary value. FWP also confirmed that they have no plans of removing the dead animal and that it is typical to let the wilderness take care of it. Today on Doppler Radar, here's Billings way over here and thunderstorms developing to the west of Bozeman around the Butte Twin Bridges area and we can see a little bit of that stick to the mountains there. Our bigger concerns, air quality, region wide, but really air quality alerts into effect for most of the northern portion of the state, Sheridan County on over into the eastern portion of Wyoming. But the next couple of days, it's the heat that builds in. Some of the readings could be 105 to 110 degrees. We'll talk about it. The Mineral County Sheriff's Office was involved in a shooting yesterday morning. The incident happened near Fish Creek just between Superior and Alberton and first began when the suspect was involved in an altercation that led to a stabbing and subsequent kidnapping. While authorities set up a scene perimeter, the suspect came out of the wooded area with the hostage and a weapon. When the suspect refused to obey law enforcement, he was shot and pronounced dead on the scene. Because the investigation is ongoing, no names have been released at this 
time. President Joe Biden sent shockwaves around the world Sunday afternoon when he announced that he would be suspending his re-election campaign. That decision came after weeks of pressure from many Democrats calling for the president to drop out of the race following a shaky debate performance against Donald Trump. But what's next for the party and who will square up against Trump for the presidency? Joe St. George looks into what's next. Democrats on Capitol Hill Monday praising the decision of President Joe Biden to step aside, saying that his decision was a selfless one, putting the country and the party ahead of any personal political ambition. Now the challenge for the Democratic Party will be to launch a new Democratic ticket with a little more than 100 days to go until Election Day. Vice President Kamala Harris is the favorite to win the Democratic nomination at this point. She has the endorsement of President Biden, the Clintons, Governor Gavin Newsom of California, Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, among others. But a number of top Democrats still haven't endorsed her, opening the door possibly for another candidate or multiple candidates to enter the race. The Democratic National Convention doesn't begin until August 19th. It's possible that the new nominee is picked in Chicago at the convention. It's also possible the Democrats hold a roll call vote with delegates to the convention virtually prior to the start of the gathering in Chicago, allowing the Democratic convention to be more united in nature. Delegates choosing the nominee isn't unprecedented in American history. The original purpose of political conventions in the 1800s and early 1900s was for delegates to pick the nominee at conventions. The modern primary system consisting of elections and caucuses only started in the latter half of the 20th century. President Biden is not expected to speak publicly until later this week about his decision to be the first incumbent president since 1968 to not seek re-election. As for former President Donald Trump, his top aides say that they are ready for a new nominee. Already there are some attack ads running against Vice President Harris in some media markets by conservative groups. Here's a look at some of the names being talked about the most in Washington as being possible VP picks by Vice President Harris if she gets the nomination. She could theoretically announce her running mate prior to securing the nomination if there is a contested primary. One looming question as this work week begins, will former President Trump and the new Democratic nominee ultimately debate? A debate had been scheduled between President Joe Biden and former President Trump for September 10th, hosted by ABC News. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. And with President Biden's full endorsement, Vice President Kamala Harris looks like she'll be the likely replacement. Now the speculation begins as to who could be her running mate if she is to get the nomination. Daniel Grossman looks into some of the potential options. A handful of Democratic governors are being thrust into the national spotlight as potential running mates for now candidate Kamala Harris. Roy Cooper and Gretchen Whitmer are two names you'll likely hear in the VP conversation this week. Cooper is the current governor of North Carolina serving his second term, and Whitmer has served as Michigan's governor since 2019. Both could help shore up support in their respective swing states. Josh Shapiro is another one. He's the current governor of Pennsylvania, the swing state with the most electoral votes up for grabs with 19. Shapiro has only been in office since the start of last year, but he's a popular figure as he is Pennsylvania's highest vote getter in gubernatorial history history after winning 2022's election by 15 percentage points. There's also chatter that Andy Bashir could make the short list of VP candidates. At 46, Bashir is young and has won the gubernatorial race in the deep red state of Kentucky twice. While unlikely to flip how his state votes this November, the Thomas B. Fordham Institute describes Bashir as a moderate Democrat. Then there's retired astronaut Mark Kelly, who has served as a Democratic senator for the swing state of Arizona since taking over John McCain's seat in 2020. Kelly has deep ties to the military, having served in the U.S. Navy as a combat pilot and is married to former Arizona Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. J.B. Pritzker is also making his name known. The Illinois governor is the wealthiest politician in the country, which could come in handy on a shortened campaign. Pritzker has also been known to not hold back punches when speaking about opponent Donald Trump. Lastly, there's political newcomer Wes Moore, who serves as Maryland's 63rd governor. Only the third black governor in U.S. history, Moore served in Afghanistan from 2005 to 2006 before becoming a successful entrepreneur who sold his businesses to help students transition to college. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Denver.